Hello everyone, I'm Chad Elledge. I'm Ben Bakken. We're coming to you from the OptiShot Academy and what we'd like to help you with is five things that you can do to reduce your frustration and anxiety on the golf course. So this is something that we hear a lot about. It's something that people experience and we want to give you five simple things that you can do. So Ben, where do you help people? Where do you go first to help them reduce their frustration and anxiety? Yeah, the first uh, place we're going to go with you all today is we are going to start to focus on things that you can control. So a lot of times when people play golf, they focus on the things that they can't control. They maybe focus on their playing partner that's driving them crazy. They may focus on the outcome of the golf shot. They may focus on the bad weather conditions, but none of those things are actually under your control. So what we want to do today is we want to coach you on how to focus on the things you can control. So Chad, what are some things I could focus on throughout my swing that are under my control? I would say the first thing is uh, you could focus on swinging the club. We talk about one motion a lot. Yep. You could focus on that. Uh, you could focus on just managing your tension to try to get looser, or softer. You could focus on your thoughts. Like what are you actually saying to yourself and what, what language are you using? Um, you could focus on just enjoying the day. So there's any numbers of things, but it has to be something that you can do. Right? Got it. Very good. So when you're, when you're playing golf and, and you're out there, what do you focus on? Uh, so what my go-to is really just to focus on the weight of the golf club. So can I be present to the weight of the golf club throughout the swing? So what that allows me to do while I play golf is it just quiets everything down. So I know that when I have a lot of noise going on upstairs in my head, that the outcome is not going to be what I desire anyway. So that is uh, one of my go-tos and it works extremely well for me. Very good. So uh, when we're talking about high performers, so we could look at like Nick Saban down at Alabama or, or Coach John Wooden with UCLA, or we could look at uh, Bill Belichick with the Patriots. This is a key coaching philosophy that they really get their players to buy into, uh, that if they focus on what they can control, if they do, the jo do their job to their best of their ability, the outcomes and the scores and the wins and the championship will take care of itself. So this is something that uh, a lot of golfers have yet to learn and ultimately buy into that you gotta do your job to get what you want. You got it. All right, cool. So number one thing that you can do is start with focusing on things under your control when you're playing. It will be very, very helpful to make a list. On one side of the paper, write down things that you cannot control, the score, the weather, playing partners, outcomes, any numbers of those things. And on the other side, make a list of the things that you can do uh, to help yourself. So after that, then where do you go? What's the next thing that uh, our friends at home can do to help themselves? Yeah, a lot of times what we notice with players is uh, when they focus on the swinging motion or the rhythm and tempo of the swing, that is actually something that's under their control that they can use to help them play better golf. So the interesting thing about rhythm and tempo is you all have a rhythm or tempo that's unique to you. So there's some players that swing the golf club relatively slow. There's some players that swing it very, very fast. So if you look at the PGA Tour, Ernie Els is a guy that swings it extremely slow or what looks slow, but the ball still goes far. That works for him. And then there's other guys like uh, back in the day, Nick Price. He swings super fast, but that works for him. So playing around with committing to different tempos, throughout your golf swing is something that can, can really help you play better golf. Very good. So really feeling the rhythm and the tempo of the swing would be much more productive than don't do this, don't do that, keep your head down, don't look up. Don't shank it, don't, don't shank it, it, don't hit, don't it, hit it in the water. Yeah, so those things definitely create a sense of tension. And then when, it, when the, the ball comes out and there's an error, tons of frustration follows because you think that you're doing it wrong. Yeah. So uh, focusing on what not to do is definitely a frustrating pathway. On the other hand, focusing on the feel and the rhythm of the swinging motion, definitely one, more productive to hitting better golf shots, and two, gives you something to do. Um, do you want to demonstrate if you were just to focus on the feel and the rhythm yep. of the swinging motion, what would that look like? So uh, one of the things I would do is if uh, I'm warming up on the driving range is I won't assume I know what tempo is going to work for me. I would play around with a couple different ones. So what I'm going to do here is we have three balls. I'm going to hit one with a slower tempo. I'm going to hit one with a faster tempo and then something in between. So Very I'm just going to cool. figure out what I like today. Very good. So back to uh, focusing on what you can't control, this would fall in line with that, yes? Yeah, I can totally control the rhythm of my swing. And so you're not trying to hit the ball or make nope. it don't do something or whatever. So I'm going to start with some, something slower. Okay. So in that case, so, uh, you know, at home when you do that, you might have watched Ben swing and think, well, that wasn't slow, and that's fine, mm -hmm. but to you, it felt slow. Is that, that true? 
doesn't matter what all you think. It's all about what I think. <laughs> so it's going to be important to understand that uh, there's no right or wrong. It's no. just in that case, you were focused on feeling a slower uh, swingy motion. That Is felt that slow true? to me. Yeah, that cool. felt Ernie L's like. Perfect. Okay, so now, what are you going to do? Nick Price style. I'm going fast back, fast through. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So on that one, there was not like a keep your head down or don't do this. It was just feeling fast with the swinging motion both ways. I was seeing how fast they could go on the way back, how fast they could go on the way through. Very good. Maybe not workable for me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what this one does. So what are you going to do now? Uh, somewhere right in between those two. Okay. Okay. All right. So focusing on the feel and the rhythm, if you go back and just show them like just the one motion where you start sure. to create a swinging motion. Yeah, so when we're talking about a swinging motion, uh, for those of you at home who maybe don't know what that is, essentially what we're trying to do is we're just letting the weight swing back and forth. Okay, so notice that the length of the backstroke and the forward stroke are about the same and there's no hitting at the bottom of it. So when we talk about maybe two motions or one, two, it kind of looks like this. Boom. Yeah. So there's a hit at the bottom of the ball. So essentially, We've got weight swinging back and forth and the ball just happens to be in the middle of that motion. If you were just to start to get your body moving and we're just going to start to get liquid and swinging without the rules and the drama of trying to be perfect at it, which creates all types of frustration and anxiety, you'd be surprised what you can do. So if we were to try to break the swinging motion into parts and pieces and have all these strings attached and red tape and rules and drama, creates a nightmare and then it doesn't serve your body's ability to make that smooth swinging motion. Is that true? Yep. All right, cool. So first thing, under your control, you gotta learn how to focus on things you can do. Second thing, focus on the feel and the rhythm of the swinging motion. Yep. What's the third thing that our friends at home, with, that you can do at home? Uh, when you're playing golf, grade your process and not the outcome. So what we notice most players do is after they hit a golf shot, as opposed to uh, basically uh, rating their ability to focus on what they can control, they focus so much on where the ball went. So an example would be, they hit the ball, it goes on, like, oh man, I suck, Chad, I don't understand. I just, I keep on hitting the water. Do you see I'm how terrible. bad that was? I told you, I told you I'm bad. <laughs> exactly, as opposed to looking internal first. So what was I committed to through my swing? So let's say I was committing to sensing the weight of the golf club through my swing. Well, when the shot is gone, I'm gonna judge myself or rate myself on a scale of one to five on how well I committed to sensing the weight of the golf club through the swing it has nothing to do with the outcome. So an example would be if my ball went in the water, the first place I'm going to look is, well, was I able to sense the golf club all the way through my swing? If I wasn't able to do that or there was interference, well, that's where the error occurred. It has nothing to do with my ball going into the water. It has everything to do with, I didn't commit to what I said I was going to commit to. Yeah. So you didn't effectively do your job no, to get what no. you wanted. So one to five, grading the process is a five, you totally did it. Yep. So if we go to the Patriots organization and Bill Belichick, uh, one simple sign that they have there is do your job. Yep. So if you want to get better shots, you have to do, do something. Do your job. Yeah, you got to do something. And then one to five is if you look there first, rather than just going on to the outcome and judging things that aren't under your control. Yep. It's very, very counterproductive and it creates tons of frustration. Yeah, I promise all of you at home, if you tell yourself you suck all the time, that's not helping you. <laughs> yeah, it creates more anxiety and, yeah, and the, the worry of coming more shots yep. versus just learning how to look inward and start to identify to what degree did you do your job. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, so that is uh, probably, in my opinion, one of the most important ones is having that one to five self-grading mechanism. So I would agree. Because every time we uh, coach our players, once they start getting on track with that, one, frustration goes down, and two, results show up quick. Yeah, the outcome changes dramatically. All of a sudden, they're able to play some pretty good golf. Yeah, very good. So once you start seeing the outcomes improve, then the anxiety yeah. starts to go away. You got it. All right, cool. So after we do that, focus on things you can control. Swinging motion is paramount. Grading the process is way better than judging the outcomes because it's under your control. Yeah. Then what do you do? Great players always talk about being present. So what that means is, similar to what we've been talking about so far, can you stay present to something throughout your swing? What happens is, if you don't have the ability to stay present to something, the mind is going to wander, it's going to drift, it's going to go to the future, it's going to go to the past. And once that happens, there's interference that happens between uh, the brain and the muscles. 
So once the system is overloaded and you're not staying present to one thing throughout your swing, the signal that's being sent to your muscles is now interrupted and the golf ball is going to do funny things no matter how good your technique is. Yeah, very good. So a lot of anxiety would come from the fact that you're getting too far ahead of yourself or living in the future. Is that true? In the future or in the past. So yeah. one of the other things that we notice with players is a lot of the, the people we work with is they'll step up to a golf ball uh, knowing that they shank the last three balls out of bounds and that's the only thing that they're thinking about. So essentially they're living in the past. Just because something happened to you in the past, it doesn't mean that's going to happen on the very next shot. There you go. So, so time, travel, time travel, whether it be in the past or the future, and the inability to stay present is where a lot of this anxiety comes from. Is that true? Uh, yeah, it's a game killer. Yeah, very good. So yeah. uh, if you look at a lot of the Eastern disciplines, martial arts, what have, uh, what have you, they always go back to breathing as a centerpiece or a focal point because mm -hmm. it's the surest way uh, to bring you to the present moment. So if you can just focus on your breathing, to help you get present, it would be one tool. There's a lot of tools, but that's Tons one tool yeah. that, uh, that allows you to get in the moment rather than be too far out away from where you're at now. You got it. Very good. So you're telling me that being present when people are playing or training is going to help reduce the frustration and anxiety? Yeah, and you'll hit sweeter shots because of it. Almost. The cool thing about this one yeah. is it's almost immediate. It works immediate. So all the players we work with, as soon as we introduce this concept to them, it's amazing how much the outcome changes. That's fascinating. So it's a shot. And it's amazing how much the, the swing or the technique changes. Yep. So all of a sudden you see liquid movement come out and dynamics and power and all the stuff. Uh, so it's truly fascinating. Okay. So we have focus on things under your control. Feel the rhythm of the swing motion. Mm -hmm. Right? We're going to talk about grading the process, not the outcome, and being present. And lastly, what is one thing that our friends at home can do? Another cool thing you could try at home is experience gratitude through your swing. So a lot of times when you're experiencing that anxiety or frustration, uh, you're not grateful. I know that. You're either stuck in the past or you're too far into the future. So experiencing gratitude while you swing is something that you can do to keep the mind engaged throughout the swing and it'll, it'll actually make the anxiety go away. So one of the other things that's worked well for me when I play golf is to get rid of some of that anxiety is I'll focus on being grateful for my family. Hmm. So there's nothing that means more to me than my kids and my wife. So feeling that gratitude throughout my swing allows me to free myself up and once I'm free because I'm experiencing gratitude the outcome gets pretty cool. What's amazing about the gratitude is one it's under your control yep. and two it is impossible to feel authentically grateful and be frustrated or anxious at the same time. It's impossible time. isn't it? You can't do it so yep. try. So if you're authentically going there and you, you literally start counting your blessings when you're out playing, you're going to feel differently and then you're going to start to perform differently. Mm -hmm. At the very worst, you're not going to be anxious and frustrated. Cool? So if you're playing golf, you have to consider that one, you're physically healthy and capable enough to be out there doing uh, an activity. So you have that to be grateful for. If you're playing golf or practice and training, you have the financial means to pay for clubs and get out there and play. So you have that to be grateful for. You had talked about your family. Yep. You have loved ones that care about you. You have that to be grateful for. When you hit good shots, it's fun, makes you feel good. You could be grateful for the ones that you do hit well. So there's any numbers of things that you could be grateful for. And if you practice this skill, one, you'll get better at it. Yep. And two, uh, it's going to start to change the way you feel. So having said that, if you can exercise these five or one or two of them, you're going to start to feel differently. And when you start to feel differently, you're going to start to perform better. So when you're out playing golf, we want you to have a good time and enjoy the time that you're spending out there versus the frustration and anxiety that can come with this game if you don't have ways to manage or mitigate it. Anything else uh, you want to add before we uh, call it a day here? Uh, just make sure that when you're kind of running these experiments or kind of dabbling with the five things that you can do to re uh, reduce your frustration, just make sure you're trying just one at a time. So remember, if you're trying to do too many things at one time, that's not going to help your golf game either. So don't try to focus on you know, gratitude and swinging the weight at the same time. Just pick one of them. And as long as you pick one of them, we promise it'll help you play better golf. Very good. So we want you to use some of these things one at a time. And uh, you know, as you're a golfer, you're going to have other friends uh, that experience probably these same things that we've all gone through. So share this video with them and pass it along. And, and you all have something to talk about and enjoy when you got on the golf course next time. We thank you for tuning in. And we'll look forward to seeing you the next time at the OptiShot Academy. Mm -hmm.